Okay, welcome to the Lobodan Podcast. Today we have Anthony Fuentes, comedian, Puerto Rican father, Army veteran, and today is Memorial Day, so let's give it up for those who made the ultimate sacrifice so we can record podcasts like this and talk shit about hookers in Korea. But anyways, uh, we talk about his dad, his two dads, Mexican dad, Puerto Rican dad, who used to ran numbers in Brooklyn. We talk about the hookers in Germany when he was in the Army and the drinking girls in Korea uh, that had black syphilis. And at the end, we do hear a story where he might have lost his virginity to his Mexican stepsister when he was 12. No, maybe nine. Anyways, but check him out, dude. He's been all over the comedy scene. He also, he was on my Mascot Monday show. Next one is going to be this Monday, 6-7, with uh, Joey Villagomez headlining. If you want to record a podcast, hit up James Webb. Please support, like, the Patreon. Get some more stuff out there for you guys. If you haven't, tell a friend. Uh, I'm going to probably start an OnlyFans soon, so I'll put regular content out and uh, probably pictures of my dick. So, Lobo Day. Okay, welcome to Lobo Den Podcast. I'm your host, Giovanni Diaz. To my left is James Webb, People of Comedy Studio. What's up, James? What's up, man? And right in front of we have Anthony Fuentes. What's up, brother? What's up, Anthony? Anthony, like a typical Latino, showed up with his kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how I do. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got my kids with me, threw them in the other room, and hopefully uh, they don't break shit. So. Yeah, there you go. They, they got Netflix James. going. They're good. They got, yeah, they're good. Netflix entertains all those kids they all around the world. They're over there yeah. watching a Queen of the South or something right yeah, now. Yeah, they're learning. That's how they learn. <laughs> they're narcos. Yeah, I teach them ahead of time. I'm like, why? Watch this. <laughs> Learn this, because I ain't trying to be broke all my life. <laughs> Look, like my dad, he, he, what we used to do, what our rate, like family, our rated movies were like family movies with us. So there's a movie, I think we talked about it with James, it was like the Marlboro Man and Harley Davidson yeah. Man. Yep, yep, with uh, whatever the football Ooh. player is. So these are all our rated movies, so we ran them, and we bought the Double Decker VHS from uh, Sam's Club, and he'd yeah. always, and we go to EP, the longest plane to record like, they were horrible quality because we recorded like three movies on one tape. Yeah, and then so yeah, my dad was a that's a fair that's a fair offense, right? Yeah, oh, it is. for yeah, sure, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, it's punishable fellow. by up to yeah. two hundred thousand dollars. You put the little p- piece of paper and the plastic yeah. thing and you to get it to record. record. Yeah, uh, your dad was a gangster. He was <laughs> he was the mobster of movies. He, he was, was like, if you need something movies, to watch, he'll give it to you. Watch. He was also a coyote. He's in Mexico now. I got a port, and he was in Cook County Jail. Actually, he just hit me up for money again, <laughs> but. <laughs> Fantastic father. But usually, usually I tell my dad, I don't know what you would, um, your relationship with my dad. Usually I tell my dad, commission check, I'll send you some money. But now, I have a girl now, and like we're saving up to get a place. So I tell my dad, no. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I know. was like, I didn't say fuck off, but I was like, hey, I'm saving for a place. Like, but see, all, you know? I think all fathers from the 70s and 80s kind of like that. Mm-hmm. It kind of sums it up. But you know what? I realized, because I was talking about this today to my friends, mm-hmm. and I actually posted this on Facebook, is I blame Charles Bronson. I blame he's, Charles Bronson. He's Charles Polish. Bronson was the Latino hero, but he still every Latin man you meet, if he grew up in the seventies, eighties, they watch Charles Bronson. I watched Charles Death Bronson. Wish. Death Wish. I watched it with my dad. I saw titties all day. Just titties on TV. I was like, "Daddy, what's that?" He's like, "Don't worry about it. You gonna find out." Soon. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't really know about Charles until uh, I mean, I knew I always would see the posters, but I remember yeah. Joe Diaz would talk about this some scene where he. He'd always talk about, he has his rants, Joey Diaz, about Charles Bronson going off. Uh, like, there's a scene, I know there's a scene where the movies that we played for Joe Rogan where he's like blowing somebody's head off. It was like Joey Diaz, Charles Bronson. He's like, You gotta watch. Di-. I can't do his fucking voice anymore. You, uh, you gotta watch. He got what was your dad like? Your dad, put her, you're full blood Puerto Rican, right? Yes. So, yes. both your dads, your mom and dad from the island. Bo- uh, but or? you know what? I actually have two fathers. You mm-hmm. said both your dads, but believe it or not, I not in that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's crazy that you do it. I actually have a father who, my stepfather, is Mexican okay and he married my mother when I was very young and then I had my father in New York who's Puerto Rican but I'm full blooded Puerto Rican full blooded Puerto Rican but my dad's a piece of shit too I love him <laughs> he's a piece of shit he runs numbers oh. and it's the funniest thing because it's what, illegal- it, what does that mean I was here running numbers okay so it's like illegal gambling mm-hmm. and they go off at a horse track and they take the sums and they come up with a number and I guess that number is like the lottery mm-hmm. and it pays seven to one odds so you pay a dollar you make seven bucks you get the three numbers you hit a dollar you make seven hundred and it's funny because... Is this just an East Coast thing? Because I was hearing about... It really is. Okay. It's mostly because this is during the times of Bumpy Johnson. He used to run numbers back in the day. Mm-hmm. My father... I don't understand why he does it now. Because now it's... A How old your dad? My like father's 70, almost 80. 70? Oh, okay. He's almost 80. But it's hilarious because at one point the cops kept stopping him all the time. 
they knew who he was because what they would do is they have an illegal depart a department that steals the money because they're not going to report anything over I think fourteen thousand or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a federal crime, so instead they'll just report like eight hundred dollars, pocket the money, split it between themselves, and you go to jail for a couple of days, pay your fine, you get out. Yeah. But my father, they knew him so well that he would actually act like he was mentally disabled <laughs> when he would go to the place. He'd put a scarf over his mouth and just start walking. He was like Simple Jack yeah. of New York. And right? one day I pulled it up and I seen him. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why are you walking like a moron? He's like, oh, I don't want them to see me. They're going to take me to jail. I'm like, they're going to take you to jail for looking like a retard on freaking the street. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> That's retarded. Yeah, <laughs> Literally. Bro. And now he does it and it's like a dead art because, you know, people who played it back then were... Mm -hmm. Are all dead now, almost, or they're collecting social security. Mm -hmm. So it's hilarious because I'll go visit him, and he does it in the projects now in the parking lot because he can't even afford a spot to do it at. And you'll hear them. They're like, "Juan, let me play five for a nickel and ten cent combo." I'm like, "Dog." So you leave here with about eight dollars, standing all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like they hit and they hit for like five dollars. Oh, I made five bucks. You know what I mean? And he's like, "Yeah, you know, this is my job." I'm like, "Yeah, ain't no job." So yeah, it's like a bookie type of thing, but just for like the kind numbers. Because yeah. I, like, I know, I know, I think Rogan, I heard on Rogan's podcast, um, he his grandma think I got arrested for running numbers. And that was like, yeah, yeah. she was an Italian lady in New York or something My like dad that. used to stay getting locked up. <laughs> they knew him on a first name basis. Where in New York is he? Is he He's in up? Brooklyn now. Okay, Brooklyn. Yeah. They grew up in Brooklyn? Where you grew up in New York, right? Yeah, I grew up mostly in When'd New York. When did you come back? When would you come Well, here? believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this about me. I was born in Illinois because mm -hmm. my mother and father got in a fight. Yeah. And my mother's like, I'm uh, sick of you. Your Puerto Rican dad? My Puerto or Rican or dad. Mexican dad. She was like, fuck you. Fuck your numbers. Kiss my ass. Uh -huh. You can go to hell. I'm leaving. And she went to go visit my grandmother in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, she was so stressed out, she had me. Okay. <laughs> That's me. I was born out of stress. That's what I was. I was born of stress. I was like spawn of Satan when I was born because it was like all bad. My father wasn't around. She was stressed out. They said I had died. And then I came back to life, and she was like, yeah, so I named you after St. Anthony. I was like, I don't know why, because I damn sure ain't no what saint. What did St. Anthony do? Do you know? I have no clue. Okay. But I know I ain't no saint, and I damn sure did not fit the prescription of him, or I didn't fulfill his legacy. Mm -hmm. St. Anthony, I'm sorry. I apologize, but <laughs> I didn't fulfill his, his legacy. But from there, I went back to New York, and then I lived with my dad. Anthony of Padua. Let's see. Anthony ever do Italian, was a Portuguese. What do he do? Ex export, the poor and the sick. Yeah, look at that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you like See, He's even skinny. People. I'm like the fat version of St. Anthony. I'm Fanthony. There you go. He looks like Eminem with a beard or something. Yeah, he does, right? He looks, and what is he looking at? That's Why is every like, saint Is that Logic? Look he looks some type of white rapper. Logic, Eminem. I don't know what look the that. difference is. That looks like Moses Malone. Look at that baby or something. Yeah, that looks like that guy who it got looks, them tats on his face. That looks like he's on, not on hair on, but he's on something. He on that shit. He looks like he's from Kenosha or something like that. <laughs> he's, like he's about to ask you for a dollar. <laughs> this cracker ass. Yeah, he, he does, dude. I just need a little bit more to get this guy's this cracker ass say. He doesn't even, Oh, that's funny. He looks like yeah, a, a, dude, a bunch of dudes I'd see. It really he is. looks like he drinks monster energy drinks. Look at him. Yeah. Look at it. He just looks weird. That's incredible. But yeah, I was named after him. I ended up going back and I stayed with my dad, but mm -hmm. my dad's another character, that guy. I love him. But he ain't all there. Like he, I, I went to go visit him because I did a show in New York. What's his hair like, your dad? Just pick, his I hair? Want to picture him. He has he's long bald. hair, short hair. Oh, he's he's bald. bald on the top, hair on the side. He's okay. on my face. Wear glasses. Somewhere. Got glasses. A big glasses. No, I was no. just watching this dude. The you know what's funny? No, he wears glasses. he wears a hat mm -hmm. that says God is good, so the cops won't fuck with him. Oh, okay. I swear to God, he wears a hat that says God is good. <laughs> he, I'm not he, surprised. Dude. Yeah, why he runs numbers? He's like, hey, by the way, God bless you. You owe me five dollars. I know a Puerto Rican. I'll just say this because. Uh, I'll just say this, but I know an older Puerto Rican dude, church guy, always at the church, but scamming it. He just got out of jail like last week again. He's yeah. in his 60s, 70s, dude. Scam artist. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Those are the best scam artists he's, are the guys he, that go to church. Yeah, he's a he's church. Uh, if you meet him, he seems like a good church going guy, but I know this motherfucker is like. He like stab you in the name of Jesus. He's like take. He's a. Uh, you ever watch the Catch a Contractor with? Uh, was it with Adam Carolla? He's yes. One of those. He's yes. that. But he's like he can't do jobs in Lake County. He goes far now to do jobs because his <laughs> name is so tarnished that you know what I mean. Uh, allegedly, because this is one of my right. good yeah. friends' his dad. But fucking. yeah, that's that's my dad. My dad's like that. My it's funny though because when I went to go do a show out there a couple years ago at the Broadway Comedy Club. Yeah, yeah. He lives in like a senior citizen building mm -hmm. in New York. It's a studio apartment. You got a bed, kitchen, bathroom, that's it. And he's like, you got to come upstairs. I'm like, why? 
I want you to see my orange tree. A Spanish. I'm like, what the fuck? Orange tree. <laughs> Upstairs. Bro, I swear to God, this fucking guy has a lime plant with limes and an orange tree. He planted with oranges in Brooklyn, New York. I'm like, you're the only Brooklyn guy I know that has an orange tree in a studio apartment. Like, how the hell do you even do that shit? And he's like, yeah, my oranges. I'm like, bro, just move to a farm. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to, bro, he had a restaurant in Brooklyn back when I first got out of the army. Mm hmm. And uh, I used to run it with him. I get to the restaurant one day, and I don't see my father. The cooks are like, he's out and back with the roosters. And I'm like, with the roosters? In Spanish, you know? Mm -hmm. So I go back there. This fucking guy's got roosters in the back of the restaurant live in a cage, and he's just feeding them bird seeds. <laughs> he's like, look, I bought these for $500. I'm like, <laughs> Dad, this is a fucking restaurant. You can't have live poultry at a restaurant in Brooklyn. It just doesn't work that way. How, how long how was it with your dad and your mom together? Oh, Chaos. Do you, do you have brothers and sisters with them? Or? I got a lot of brothers and sisters. Okay. With yeah. the, the Mexican and with the Puerto Rican? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, come on. My dad's a whore. <laughs> he really is. He's got kids all over. It's funny because I remember when I took him to Coney Island Hospital and I was out of the Army and he's rubbing his head. And at this time, he's like 60-something, almost 70. I'm like, oh, man, he's stressed out, you know? I'm like, don't worry about what the doctor says. It's going to be all right. He's like, no, it's not the problem. I got this girl, she's 20, and she's pregnant by me. Oh I'm like, Wait, how old was he? How old was he? How old was he? Like 60 something. I'm like, these are conversations I should be having with you. You know what I mean? You're getting more ass than me. Like, what the fuck? Like, I just got out the army. I had had no girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I wasn't smashing at all. You know what I'm saying? And this guy's getting more tail than me. I'm like, whoa, whoa, way to go, dad. He's got pregnant, you know? So I got a brother who's about the same age as my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was chaos. My mom and dad, they, they were better. It's, you know what the problem is with Latinos? Mm -hmm. And with relationships in general, every relationship, they don't just break up when it's time to break up. You know, like you've never seen a couple that's like, you know what? Shit ain't working out. Mm -hmm. Let's stay friends. Let's end it. No. No, instead, of, they want to push it to the envelope where they want to murder each other. <laughs> then break up. You know, like, you know what? I know it's not working out, but I'm going to stay with you until I want to stab you in the neck. And then... Give then her, it's then yeah then give, it's a done deal. Give her that Chris Benoit, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if people shit. know the reference, you know you got a little C T. Is it C T E? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. C T E. Yeah. C T E. So don't play uh play two hand touch, otherwise. Yeah. You'll kill otherwise, your family. <laughs> yeah, you'll kill your family and kill yourself. <laughs> you'll go murder on a murdering spree. <laughs> That's I love the it. only. I wonder if they have that in the contract of NFL. You know, like <laughs> at any moment, if you decide to murder your family, we are not responsible. <laughs> oh, like when? Oh, after like a thing, you, you cannot record this. Blah blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> you kill your family. We are not responsible. <laughs> Sorry, Junior Sale, and somebody else. I forgot. It was a bunch There's of. There's a few of them. One of them just happened, didn't it? Huh? Oh, the boxer, that Puerto Rican boxer killed this girl. They said it was CT. Yeah, yeah. And going back, they say OJ was CT, right? Like, it makes OJ sense. OJ was now. just OJ. <laughs> the juice? OJ had everything wrong with OJ. Hey, the juice. It was a funny, I remember Chris Rock had a funny bit. Or he would say, like, about OJ Simpson, he's like, it's because he, you know, it's not because he was like, because he was famous. He got away with it. He, he was like, if OJ, he would say, what's the line? He said, if OJ was not famous, he wouldn't even be OJ. He'd be like, what did he be, Orenthal? Yeah, he'd be Orenthal. <laughs> yeah. Orenthal, Orenthal. The, the bus driver murderer. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I remember. Oh, fuck yeah. uh, how long have you, you been with the, speaking of relationships you've been with your girl for a while uh, yeah oh. a while too long, a while too long. <laughs> yeah. we're at that point where like I want to stab you in the neck you know you're past the honeymoon stage or whatever very past it very past it now I just look at her and like ah, if only you know like I watch shows and I envy the guys and I'm like man how do you get away with that shit if I can do it you know like she was like always she always wonders like why are you always watching crime dramas I'm like don't worry about it just what know is, what is she? that if what your ass ends up missing, I can get away with it. Mexican? She's Mexican. Mexican. She's Mexican. You know what part of Mexico she's from? She's from Jalisco. Oh, my mom's from Jalisco. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The first time- Is she light-skinned? No, white she's, people she's, she's brown. She's dark. Okay. She's dark. It's funny because the first time I went to her house, her aunt's house, I'd never met nobody there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know about the culture. It, my stepfather's Mexican, but- you know, he just never really told me about his culture. You know, I know a lot about it now. Yeah, he went to work, came home. Yeah, and, he went yeah. to work. The typical Mexican dude. Yeah. Like, he's like, I just got to make bread. You yeah. know what I mean? But I went to her house, and she, her aunts are there. They cut up chips, a bowl of cut up limes, and a bowl of chopped up onions. She leaves me at the kitchen, and she's like, I'm going to go talk to my aunt. First of all, I'm fat as shit. You can't leave me for more than five minutes without food, okay? Because <laughs> my blood pressure starts going low. My sugar gets low. So I see the chips. I see the onions and the limes. I'm like, holy shit, appetizing. So I start putting onions and limes on the chips, and I ate the whole thing. I mean, it was only a bowl like that. All of a sudden, her aunt comes back. She's like, oh, my God. 
who ate all the chips and the onions? They were cooking pozole mm. en menudo. And I guess that's for that. And I, you know what the worst part was? It was the very first time I was meeting these people. <laughs> so that day, she explained to them who I was. She brought them out from the from the living room. And here's my fat ass eating all your chips and onions. Hi, nice to meet you. You know, like it's the most awkward moment. My friend, I mean, that's not too bad. My friend, the first time I know, he, one of the first times he met his dad-in-law. What is that called? Stepdad? Not stepdad. Father-in-law. Yeah. His father-in-law, right? He, I remember he, he had to clean the, he threw up all over his truck. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. He threw up all. Like, I'm trying to think of the first time. <laughs> Usually, I don't have a bad first impression. That was his father in law. I remember he got drunk. He met him. He got drunk, and he ended up. I think he borrowed the truck, and he. Oh, maybe the 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 wife now was driving. And he threw up all over the truck, so he had to clean oh it up. So that's God. the first. So like that was the first. Still, I can see it now. <laughs> can I marry your daughter? <laughs> all over your truck but i haven't had any now i don't think i have any bad impressions because like i used to have bad impressions cause I, used, I was actually just asking my girl i was like i asked her today I was like, you ever see me drunk like drunk drunk she's like no i was like oh you're lucky because i was a I was a fucking animal right oh man oh, i don't think you met me drunk before no you never it, drunk me died about two years ago i think when yeah it was, when I was i've a, seen you lit i've seen you lit like like lit uh, litish 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 like lit-ish. you have a uh, like a drink or yeah. two or something like that like yeah. when i do a shot even a drink I, unless i host I'll have a few drinks or something like that, but nah, I used to, like, I used to be a fucking animal, man. I don't know. Do you, uh, I was like that in the army. In the I army? To, what? I used to fucking drink like that. Was Where were you at? Where were you stationed? I was stationed all over. Fort Hood, Texas. I was in Camp Castle, Korea. I was in Baumholder, Germany. I was where'd all you, over. Where'd you, where, Everywhere where, there was to drink. Where was, where'd you <laughs> like the, the German week? Germany, Korea? Oh, my God. Germany is where I went broke. Uh-huh. I was 21 years old. No, lies. I was 20 years old when I got to Germany. I was an E1. So I was only making like three hundred dollars mm-hmm. every two weeks, and I'd never heard what the red light. Again, Brooklyn guy, mm-hmm. you know. At this point, I go there, and I don't know what to expect. So I go walking, and um, I'd never heard of the red light district. I'm just walking around. And I see this beautiful woman. Where in Germany is this? This is over by Baumholder. Okay, but I was traveling during the time, so we go by the red light district, and I see this beautiful woman in the window staring at me, you know, and I'm. Broke, barely, you know, holding on to dear life, you know, skinny guy. And I see her, and she's just like eyeballing at me, and I'm just walking by, like, me? She's like, yeah, pointing at me. I'm like, oh my God. How'd she look? Blonde? Beautiful, blonde. beautiful. She was Colombian. Oh. Check this out. She was Colombian. I'm like, holy shit, the Spanish people in Germany who are beautiful and wear lingerie and stand at windows. I'm like, what the fuck? Where am I at? So I go inside, because she called me in. She went like that. So I go in, and the madame stops me. And she's like, ah, oh, how are you doing? You are you a soldier? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. She's so like, what do you are. want? I'm like, I was just trying to holler at the girl at the window. <laughs> and she's like, oh, we have everything. And she calls the girls, bro, every nationality you could think of. From that moment until I left Germany, I was broke. <laughs> I swear to God, I was broke. My sergeant was always like, Fuentes, stop fucking them hoes, man. Cut your goddamn hair. You're looking like shit. Y'all ate up. Because they knew what I was. I was like, fuck that. Everybody's like, I'm going to the club. I'm like, I'm going to go fuck hookers. I'm like, why am I going to waste my time trying to get it? If I can get it guaranteed and I'd just rather pay and waste my money instead of liquor, I'd just spend it on that. And, bro, I was there every, every payday I was there. I got paid Friday, Sunday I was broke. <laughs> so allegedly i used to be a caddy right actually i'm gonna caddy tomorrow i still I oh yeah for extra money yeah but i used to be a you know i was a, when i was a cat carry golf bags for rich white people yeah yeah they're mostly white actually they're jews where i work but anyways uh i would caddy and then i remember some fucking mexican dude some mexican dude f- f- told me about a whorehouse and i was like hey and i was like nah get out of here and i found it and then when i found that i remember for like a summer Every fucking I would go because we get paid every day. We get our loop, we get paid. So I remember I go to work, caddy, I'd be on the way home. After that first time, I was like, no, no, no. And then I was like, whorehouse. Yeah. And then I mean, the first time I would say this, the first time I felt like the first time I did it, it felt really weird. I was like, oh man, I can't believe it paid for sex. It's horrible. But after that, I was just like, oh hell no, not me. I was like, holy (laughs) shit, I paid for pussy and I got it and it was clean. It was crazy. They like, they actually. It's legal there, but they get tested, they get all that, you know what I mean? So you know, and they have different races all the time. Every week they might have Russian, they might have, you know, Lithuanian. They have, man, I was, bro, I was an international whore. <laughs> I was going nuts. I'm telling I was broke. No, I, I, well, it wasn't, it wasn't that much, uh, but I remember, 
it's i remember i would go every time there was a point where i was like man like i hit that jordan number it was like 23 and i was like all right what am i doing like i need to chill the fuck out so then yeah. i chilled out and went away and then i stopped for a while and then i was listening to the fucking joe rogan podcast and then they had some lady on they did a documentary about back page and it was a negative documentary like this is fucked up blah blah and i was like what is this back page and I was like well i didn't even know about it right you know they're trying to shine a light on an issue uh about uh prostitutes and i was like man so then i, w- I just w- i remember i went to that website and i looked at it and i was like and i typed you know waukegan i was like oh shit and then you, you see all these like prostitutes around you and it's Holy like shit. and it's like people don't know about that world it's like they're everywhere like you know yeah. like, i would travel for work it's like chattanooga whatever anywhere you anywhere you can go like any any little town you're at anywhere just look at a holiday or whatever it's i don't know how it is i'm sure it's still the same but they were at that time they were full they were all they were all full of hookers. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And you know, I would go on work trips or whatever. But then I, Backpage got shut down by the federal government, which and I remember that when that day happened, I was very happy because it's like I didn't have the self control to stop. Yeah. Because I wouldn't do it when I was <laughs> I never did it when I was sober. It, yeah. What happened is like I'd be there, maybe I'd hang out with a girl, I'd drink, and then I get close to blackout drunk, and then I'm backpage. And I yeah. was like, Pff. and that's when that's when yeah, that's when that was the dark times for yeah, Giovanni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they make the Lifetime movie about you, they'll cut this part out. They're yeah, like, this yeah. is it's not. You know, and it wasn't back. I mean, I got, only got rubbed. I don't know if you, well, you were legal, right? Mine was illegal. Yeah, so I got mine robbed, was legal. I got robbed once, right? I only got robbed oh, one shit. time by, yeah, in Zion. I got robbed one time. <laughs> this fucking bitch. Uh, we're going to find you, whoever you are. No, I went back. I went back, allegedly. Right? Yeah. I went back, allegedly, not armed. But I didn't find him again. But I fucking, uh, I don't know. It, it was... I mean, but at the end of the day, that's we all pay for sex. We do. Yeah. You get engaged, you pay for the ring. Why? Because you want sex. Yeah, I paid for a ring. You know what I'm saying? You go with your girlfriend, you take her out to drinks. Why? Because you want sex. Mm -hmm. Take her out to dinner because you want sex. That's life the whole time. You have kids that you have to pay diapers for and buy stuff for so you can continue to have sex to have more kids. That's just life. That's just life. How old were you had your first kid? Oh, my God. How would you find out? Were you... You know what? I found out because she told me she's like, I'm pregnant. And I was excited at first. <laughs> at first. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, fuck. That means I can't do a lot of shit that I used to do, you know, because it's like everything changes. I was 26. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking about it like, damn, I waited so long. I should have been a fucking teen father. You know, I should have started at 17 because this little heifer is going to be way old and I'm going to be super old. You know what I'm saying? But I was fine. I was like, you know what? She's going to be the only child. I'm good. And then years went by. And I have my son. And I'm like, damn. She's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, fuck How you. How old were you in the second? I was already, what, 32? Mm-hmm. No, Dom's f- seven. I'm 40. Yeah, about 33. And I was like, fuck me. I was out. I was done. You know, like, because my daughter, she was seven at the time. I'm like, yo, she was good. You know, go get daddy a beer. She'd go to the fridge and grab it. You know, make her own cereal. Now you got to start all over again. Now it's like, oh, my God. Man, it sucks. But it's good. I got my pair. I got my daughter and my son. I'm happy. The day I had my son, I was like, I'm going downstairs, cut my fucking nuts, burn them, throw them out. I don't want no fucking mistakes. Throw, matter of fact, can you just insert a vagina there? I'll just, you know what? I'll be a lesbian with my girl. We'll just we'll scissor each other. I don't give a shit. I'm not having kids. I'm done. And then she was like, should I get my tube side? I'm like, do it. If you can, please do. Because I'm getting snipped, I want to make sure there's no, you know, accidental entry or anything like that. So I ended up getting it. I got the vasectomy. I'm done. How long did that take? Is it a long procedure? Like it's it's. They say it's not painful. Bullshit. That shit's painful. It hurts. You know how hard it is. You're getting your nuts dealt with, bro. Have it's, you guys and, have you guys been tested for STDs before? Yeah. Okay. Of what course. is that? Because I'm going soon. Because I went to a doctor this morning, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> huh. And I was one of the things on my list was getting tested first because I've never been tested, right? Yeah. You know, my girl's always getting. She's like, look, she's like, I've never had this many uh, yeast infection UTIs. Like, what's going on with you? And I was like, it's you. Blames you, right? <laughs> I'm like, yo, maybe you need to drink more. You know, what's that juice called? They drink cranberry uh, cran- juice. Maybe you need to drink more cranberry juice. Okay, A to Z. They sell it at Walgreens. <laughs> so, so you're gonna get tested. I'm gonna get tested. I can't tomorrow. I think I'll go Thursday. But I've never, I've never. I'm the only like I said before. The only time I tested is I used to sell plasma, right? And I heard. She just told me online they were like somebody they're looking for people who had COVID and they're looking for their plasma. I don't know. Yeah, because like they can use it as antibodies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like those people. I mean, but I, I think it's too late for me because I I didn't have it in July. So you needed to have it in the first three months, right? I think so. You had COVID? Yeah, in July. Oh shit, for real? Uh-huh. How'd you feel? 
I was like, this, this is when I kind of found out I ha- I had it. No. When you kind of found out you had no, it? No. I mean, I got, I got tested and I got found out. I remember I was like, uh, I was sick and I was like, what the fuck? And I just felt sick, but then I had a head, maybe a little bit of a headache. I usually don't get headaches, right? And I had like nausea and I'm like, am I just regular sick or whatever? And I couldn't tell. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll go get, I, let me go get tested. I couldn't tell, right? Uh, and I got tested and I, and I got COVID. And this is how I... It was that tasting, right? Mm-hmm. They were like, "Oh, you can't taste anything," and and I was like, I was eating stuff, and I was like, "But I can still taste." But what I didn't realize, I was eating stuff that had very strong flavors to it, like mole and things like that. Mm. So I was tasting it, but didn't realize I still had a taste. But I, but there was these fucking, um, I just cursed. Well, I'm going to hell. But uh, there was these chips. The, you know how Lay's has all these chips now, like street tacos yeah. and all these different flavors. I bought three different flavors. Right, this is when I was single, when I could just do things like, well, yeah. Things like I that. do that now. I <laughs> just buy whatever the fuck I want. I buy four or five bags of chips. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so now it's uh, I bought the three different flavors, and I was like, man, this flavor sucks. This flavor sucks, and I really realized it until like a week after when it went away. I was sitting there, and I was like, and I bought French onion dip from Dean's specifically because these, these chips Dean's. suck. Because like, these chips suck. Let me get some dip for them because yeah. I didn't like them. So the next day I wanted the dip. So it was a week later. I was just walking around the house, and I was like, man, I want to snack on something. So I go to the chips, like whatever. I had some of these chicks, and I was like, oh wait a second, I eat one. I don't remember this flavor. And I grabbed the other one. I was like, I don't remember this flavor. And then I realized, like, oh, I did lose like a taste. Damn. But it, yeah, a taste or something like that. So, yeah, I had it. Uh, no, you didn't. You didn't have COVID, right, James? Did you have no. it, James? No. Uh, well, I might have had it. I don't know. There was a point I... where all the legal aliens guys got it and they were out at the same time. We all got oh, sick. Oh, shit. Abby but, and everybody? Yeah, Abby and uh, yes, I'll both I got it. I remember when Abby got it. But, like, I don't know for sure if I had it. But I, I honestly did. thought I had it every freaking time I went out. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> that was the. W- I am the most paranoid. Listen, when I was in the army, I was fucking fearless. I was. I didn't care. I would fight. I didn't. Shoot me. Kill me. I don't care. I was like on a switch and they like, do it do it now kill me no. i didn't care get out of here get in the hot chopper but now i'm a father and i'm older i value life man. more yeah it's different. Bro, wild, every time dude. i went out if i coughed i would tell my girl i was like shit i got it i think i got that shit she's like relax it's summertime you got allergies i'm like nah man and then one time i kid you not i went upstairs and i was out of breath and I was like, man, I think I got it. My daughter is a little smart ass. She gonna walk by me. I'm like, y'all think I got COVID? She's like, now, Dad, you just got fat. That's all that happened. <laughs> fat you got fat as shit, you fat and that's Puerto why you didn't. Yeah, poor child. She's like, maybe you should take a diet, Dad, and then you wouldn't have such trouble breathing. And but yeah, and then the worst part was I had broke my tooth years ago, and it was starting to hurt. So at me, instead of going to a dentist, I was like, I can't because COVID. So I was taking this Listerine. And I was just, I mean, bro, I was rinsing my mouth out mm. every 20 minutes just to get rid of the pain. And one day I lost taste. And I was like, shit, I really got COVID. I can't taste shit. And I'm eating. And <laughs> it's funny because my girl's like, do you want to get tested? And I, I would get dressed and everything. But then the fat guy would kick in. And I would be like, damn, that's a long walk to the car to go sit in the line. You know what I'm saying? Like for that, I could just go sit in the line at you know, McDonald's and the drive through get a burger. Maybe I feel better. And I told her, I was like, nah, nah, you know what, man, I, I'm going to be all right. Then she started asking me, she's like, well, what have you been doing different? I'm like, well, I use Listerine. Turns out Listerine, if you use it too much, it takes the taste out of your tongue. You're not supposed to use it Or if you much. smoke too many cigarettes, too, I think it does the same thing. Well, I quit smoking because of COVID. Oh, okay. I swear to God. Is it? I, I saw a thing that people who smoke cigarettes were immune to COVID. That, I heard what, if you smoke weed, you could be, if, I saw it helps your immune system. So I was weeded the fuck out during COVID, bro. I smoked so much during COVID because <laughs> I was I had nothing to do, bro. You know what I mean, like when the first pandemic first hit in March, everybody had plans to do stuff like, you know, and I admire that because like people were getting stuff done, you know, building sheds in the you know yards or cutting I grass. Cooked. I didn't. Oh, because my mom had COVID and I was like, because oh. usually cooks and I was like, the fuck? I was like, so I cooked. I cooked like twice. You did? Yeah, yeah. Cause my See, I didn't know. I co- smoked weed. That was it. I was like, everybody's like, what are you doing? I'm going to smoke weed. And I'm going to play Call of Duty. That's it. Bro, that's all I did. I gained probably about 70 pounds when the pandemic <laughs> I gained about 70 pounds. And I didn't realize it till one day. Where are you at now? Are you, did you keep it? Did you no, no. It? I'm on a diet now. Uh-huh. I'm actually on a diet now. It sucks. What's your diet like? You know what's funny? I tried different diets. I talked to Brian Morton, mm-hmm. and Brian Morton was like, do the fasting. And I was doing well. And he'd call me, to like, you know, like text me to get an update. First three days, how you feeling? Man, I feel great. Because, you know, when you start a diet, you always feel great. 
I'm like, man, I feel fantastic. I got more energy. I'm taxing. I'm like, yeah, I did uh, 12 on. Uh, no, I did 18 and 6. 18 hour fast, 6 hours of eating. The next day he calls me. I'm like, still doing it, brother. I'm good. Two days later, he calls me. He's like, how's it going? I was like, man, it, it, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. <laughs> He's like, what happened? I was like, I started good. You know what I mean? But then my son wanted a pizza from Little Caesars. And all I had was one slice. And then I smoked. And then I realized I ate a whole pizza. <laughs> And I was like, it's, it's bad. He's like, you can get back on it. I was like, ah, not so good. I don't need to get back on it. Maybe it's not meant to be. I can't smoke because if I smoke, uh, I eat. I That's can't control me. myself, man. That is me. But I learned from actually, is it Eric, the guy who DJs over at uh, Laugh Factory? Chris? Or is it Chris? The Chris. sound dude? Chris. Yeah. Chris is the guy who does the sound. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me he used to be big. You know, fat people always give fat people advice. <clears throat> That's what we do. And he said that your body burns 1,100 calories at night while you're sleeping. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. And it really works. You see a difference. And you got to mix in some exercise. You know, go for walks. Nine, Wait, what did you start walks. doing? What was I just started, I started, I don't eat during the day at mm-hmm. all. If I do get extremely starved, I might have some almonds, pistachios, or a bag, a little bag of chips, something simple. And then at night, I'll indulge. I'll have like a, a Subway sandwich with a bag of chips. And, you know, a cookie. And I'll be good. You know what I'm saying? And that you start feeling it. You start seeing the difference. And also, I started walking because walking helps. But I used to run. I used to run like seven, eight miles a day in the Army. Now, I walk upstairs and I feel like I'm losing my life. I'm like, shit. I'm checking my pulse. I'm like, dude, I think this is it. But it it is helping. You feel the difference. You know, I feel more active. You know, you know, you got to be active especially in comedy because you know there was times like they call me on stage when the pandemic started like lifting up and by the time i got from my seat to the stage i was out of breath and people would laugh because they thought i was making fun i was like no nah, i'm serious i can't breathe i'm like dying over here and i'd be sweating i was oh you sweating. always have your towel yeah yeah I always have my yeah, no, I don't need this shows. Yeah, now I don't need it. Oh, you don't use a towel anymore? No, the sweat towel, no. the wrapper towel. Yeah, yeah. I used to call it, it it was what I call it a sweat I call it a rag for sweat, a swag. I was like, there you go. It's a swag. But now I don't use it. I don't use it no more. But it, you feel the difference. But now it sucks, bro. I hate diets. I hate, I love to eat. I love to eat. Exhibit A. As you can see, I love to eat. What do you like? What's I your... love all the bad shit. If they tell you, hey, that could clog your arteries, I'm like, yo, can I get two of those, please? <laughs> I'm that guy, bro. I'm like serious. Like I, I when people see me come to McDonald's, they fear. That like, you know what's sad? I live in Round Lake Beach. You know that. Yeah. Every fast food restaurant, when I talk through the mic, because I'm a New York accent, but when I talk through the mic at the drive thru, they instantly know who I am. <laughs> Everywhere. I swear it's sad. No, John, so and right. at first I thought that was cool, you know, until my girl really pointed it out. Cause we went to Dunkin' Donuts one time and I was like, Watch this. I'm like, yo, how you doing? They're like, hey, what's up? Comedy guy. Uh, you want to do your regular half a dozen donuts, <laughs> all chocolate glaze in the, in the large co- coffee <laughs> with mocha? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Hey, yeah, fat fuck you. <laughs> so then I order it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get that and get her coffee, too. And I looked, I was like, that's dope, right? She's like, you're happy about that? That everybody knows that you're a fat ass? That they know exactly what the hell you want, you fat fuck you? And I was like... <laughs> Damn, I didn't think about that. And she's like, you should be ashamed of yourself. I was like, well, I'm not, okay? I embrace it. I embrace it. But, yo, bro, it's bad. I, had this, I eat bad. I had the same thing at Jewel, yeah. right? Because when I used to drink, every Friday, I'd walk into Jewel, same thing, handle a smear and off, and I think four Diet Monster energy drinks, right? Ooh. Every Friday. Yeah. So then I drink, you know, I drink the handle for the weekend. Not by myself. I think I drink with other people. Yeah, you but think like, you did. Th- the, yeah, the, yeah. Or it could have just been you and you was like, that's two glasses, but it was really one. You was just feeling really nice. Because I never drank alone. So there's for certain drinks that there's certain drinks or things I can't have anymore because I like I can't drink a smear off, right? I remember one time I was with a girl and then she brought I think she brought the 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 booze and it was smear off. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, the chick was hot, so I was like, Look, I still want to fuck. So I was like, you know what? I think I got some tape and I just cover over over the the label. I just it's a mental thing. I like I couldn't really. Look at it. Yeah, it's a me- like I have a few things. I'm a little bit of a weirdo about like I can't, I that I can't have coke. I can't see it. Like I hate red onions. Bro, for some I don't know how you're gonna laugh at this. Mm-hmm. I drank so much in the army, but it was mostly beer. Mm-hmm. Right? I could drink Crown mixed with Sprite, but how people take shots, I cannot take shots. I can't. Well, I don't are- find it that. Na- I it's the, remember when we did the Mescal show mm-hmm. at the Zanies. 
And at the end, everybody was like, oh, that lady was like, let's get a shot, everybody. That was the hardest shit I ever had to do in my life. Oh, we did that shot. I took it down, but I instantly turned my face because I couldn't look like a bitch in front of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because you took y'all, y'all took yours like champs. Abby and you were like, yeah. For me, I was like, "Mm -hmm." I was like, "Mm -hmm." yeah, it was good. I was like, the girls took the shot. Yeah, even the girls took it. I felt like a punk, bro. I can't do it ever since, even when I used to drink a lot, I couldn't do it. I can't. It's just the most disgusting. I don't know why. I don't know why. Boy, it sounds like you never really, like, like, I was a drunk, right? Yeah. And I remember drinking beer when I was in my 20s, and I hated, I hated the taste of booze and alcohol and beer, and I remember it, I'd do these mind things with myself. I was sitting at the bar at this these Norteño dances, right? Norteños yeah. are northern Mexicans, right? Yes. They're a little bit more elitist than the rest oh, of us. Yeah. They're very, they try to be light-skinned. They listen to different music. They have a different, co- different culture. Yeah. There's these three states, Nuevo León, Cahuila, and Tamaulipas, and they're you know they're yeah. they're elitist right uh so i was one and i my friends were these north things so i'd go into the music like this i'd go with them and i remember i was drinking all these beers but i hated it was tecates and i hated the taste yeah but i remember i would chug them right and i would just tell myself like giovanni just keep chugging it in a few a few like in a few minutes you're gonna you're gonna have that feel, that buzz that feeling yeah. and, and then, then it's nothing then it's yeah then you, you're gonna feel great yeah right and then you're gonna talk to some girls because i can't dance so that's why i'm not a really good dancer so that's was i was able to develop skills to spek because to, i had to because mm-hmm. you know i can have some uglier motherfucker who really doesn't have any game but he can go and he's gonna pull a girl because he could dance with her and they yeah. love dancing you know what i mean so i didn't have that so i had beer and that's where i developed somewhat of a of a mouth yeah right, uh with women did you were you like a player what were you boy were you? let me tell you i had i was the perfect package except <laughs> i was skinny that was the difference but i used to go to army all my brothers would tell you that i served with i was the go-to guy they'd be like fuentes we're gonna pay for you to come with us tonight because i'd be I like i'm broke i spent all my money on hookers <laughs> and they'd be like no you got we're gonna pay for you to go because i was the one that made it happen you know what I'm saying? I'd, mm-hmm. We'd be in a group. I'd be like, point her out. All right, cool. They were a group of girls. I got you. And I'd go there and I'd do my spiel, make them laugh. Boom. I had a friend of mine named Lago. Mm-hmm. He was a Brazilian guy I served with. And he was the worst. You know, there's always that guy that ruins it for all the other guys because they say they're too off- thirsty. Yeah. And they always say yeah. some off the wall shit. You know, like they can never be like, at least like civilized. You know, like okay. you see a girl, you're like, hey, you look beautiful. No, he's like, hey, I want to fuck you. You know, like, <laughs> duh, duh, come on, respect, bro. Like, come on. You know, like, how do you think that that's ever going to work? You know, has it ever worked? No. The for- women- yeah, yeah. yeah. F- so, foreigners, like, yeah, so I would- Mexicans. Yes. And, and he spoke perfect English because he was raised out here. But I would tell him, I'd be like, Lago, you don't speak English, okay? You're from Brazil. You're my cousin. I'm half Puerto Rican, half Brazilian because I would lie. I'd be like, you know, to call the girls. I'd be like, yo, this is my cousin. He's visiting. <laughs> He's from Brazil. You know, he loves to dance because he could dance. You know, he was Brazilian. So I'd be like, he could dance. You know, hey, look, can you take him out to his birthday, man? Look, you don't take him out to dance. Capoeira fighter. Yeah, yeah. And she'd be like, oh, is it? And all he could do was this. That's it. Because I'd be like, don't talk. Do not talk. So I would always hook him up like that. And I would just, I was the ringleader. I would always make it happen. And now I'm like, nah, I'm just... <laughs> You don't want the me ring. talking for you. you know? Now I just lie. I'm like, you watch Roller? You watch Roller Derby? No. Oh, okay. My name's Anthony. How you doing? <laughs> like it's just bad. It's bad. You know how you're half Greek. I had, that happened with. Uh, I had a Polish friend, right? Oh. And God. I remember he was like, he was, he's Polish. He looks Polish as fuck. Yeah. He looks super Polish. But we were out. He's super like, Polish. Super Polish. He, he was telling this girl he was a, a, a he was a Braz- he was half Brazilian, half Greek, right? <laughs> and I remember I was sitting with his girls and they were talking to me, right? And then because we met him at some club, and I remember they looked at me. He's like your friend. I know you know he's Brazilian Greek, but he just looks so Polish. And I was just like, I don't, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't fucking know. But like I never like I don't know. There was a point because I never really lied, right? My friends would be like, hey, because I went to Waukegan and I'd go to these bars here in in the DePaul area. And then my friend's like, say this, say that. And I was like, you know, say, we go, we went to this school. Bear. And I was like, look, to me, I don't know. I, I was never really yeah. like, I was telling my girl, I was a liar. I was not, I was not a liar, right, in my early age. And then in my mid-20s, I became a liar. Yeah. Right? A drunk liar. And then I'm like slowly coming back around to my not kind of yeah. honest lying self. Because that's just, yeah. it's exhausting for me. Well, it right? does get, now I'm just too old for this shit. It's like, you know, can you imagine my ass at a club, bro? <laughs> Like what the hell? People look at me like I'm like a grandfather or like a father. Like, what are you doing here? You the know what old I mean? dude at the club. Yeah, my, when I did a show in New York a few years back, my sister she's 47, mm-hmm. but she looks really young. Everybody thinks she's younger than me, mm-hmm. and she lives life. She goes out. She's single. And she's like, yeah, let's go to the club. I'm like, I'm freaking. It's 11 o'clock at night. I want to go home. I want to go to sleep. She's like, no, let's just go. So I went, bro. I just sat at the bar, 
And I realized how much of a loser I've become because I just looked at myself in the mirror at the bar and I'm like, damn, bro, I do not belong here. Like, I am the odd man out. But back then, yeah, I used to, man, I, whatever it took. And plus, I was in the army. So when you mentioned that the girls, they were always like, oh, wow, soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the best. I'm the best of the best. In the States here? Oh, yeah, in the States here. In Germany, too. Germany was easy, but that's because I had hookers. It's always easy with them. them what about them Korea? Away. Was there a, no hookers there? Korea was a nightmare. Why? See, here's the thing. Korea, when you get to Korea in Camp Castle, they brief you. And they said, this is back in 2000. And they said, there's a very bad outbreak of black syphilis. I was like, I didn't even know syphilis. Had- black syphilis. I said the same. I was like, I didn't. Even, I didn't even know syphilis had color. I was like, oh shit. You know, like I don't discriminate. It's syphilis and syphilis. Mm-hmm. But they tell you if you catch it, you are not allowed to go back to the states. You will stay quarantined in Korea because they had drinky girls. Now I didn't know what? drinky girls. I'm explaining. Okay. It. So I didn't know what that was. So I get to Korea and it's an all male unit. That means there's no women from the army in this unit. And they used to say, ugly girls, princess for a day. That means if the ugliest broad came to yeah, that base yeah, yeah. and she was a medic, she could look one tooth and she'd be like, oh my God, Beyonce's here. you yeah. know. And every guy would try to holler because you would go to the clubs and the first time I went, this girl was like, buy me drink. It was a Korean girl. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. So I gave her the equivalency of $10 American money. She takes the dollar, the $10. She comes back, I swear to God, with something like this. And she sits it down. She goes, thank you. I, me being cheap, I was like, oh, hell no, nah, bitch, that shit did not cost no $10. I took it from him. I'm like, oh, I'll take that. That's my $10, bitch. So I drank it, and my boy's laughing. He's like, bro, those are drinky girls. I'm like, what the hell's a drinky girl? They're girls who are hired by the bar to give you conversation upstairs. There's rooms. So that's part of the price you have to pay is to pay the $10 up front to get the conversation. I was like, I could talk to myself. I don't need to pay $10 to talk to somebody. If I that, I just call a 976 number, you know what I mean? But those are the girls they say that are the worst, that have it the worst. So The dude, black syphilis. Man, bro, you know, I was a priest in Korea. Because you couldn't do nothing for a whole year, bro. So how did you drink? The, so how did it start? You get the drink first? You get the then, drink, they give you conversation, and then they make the offer. Okay. If you want to, you pay more, they give it to whoever's in charge, they take you to the room. Bang your brains out, but I wasn't trying to catch back syphilis. I was like, I don't want it. I don't want Mexican syphilis. I don't want Puerto Rican syphilis. I just don't want syphilis. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it. And you, they are serious. You will not come back. Do you ever get burned? I think I had chlamydia once. No, I've been no. lucky. I haven't been burned. I've dodged a lot of bullets. I have not been burned yet. But mm. it, I'm scared. Now I'm 40, so now I'm just like, hey, I'll stick to the one I got because <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Nowadays, man, these girls and guys, they're all over the place. Yeah, I, uh, I got burned once. I've, it was by my ex. No, we were we were together at the time, right? Yeah. But the, how I found out it was funny. I had a bit about it. The mom called me. Yeah. And the mom called me. She's like, "Hey, I'm here with ex with person. Yeah. Let's give her a name. That's not her actual let's name. Let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, Slatiana. Respucia. Okay. Okay. Respucia. <laughs> so, uh, Respucia Slatiana. So I remember the mom called me. He's like, "Hey, I'm at the clinic." He's like, "I'm here with uh, whatever Slatiana at the clinic." And she has chlamydia. You're one of the partners. You got to come take this pill. She said you're one of the partners. Yeah, as one. A pearl? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mom's yeah. blew it up. And I was like, and then, and then apparently, well, she, then afterwards she told me was, uh, I was at a party. I was, I was uh, drugged. I think. And I was like, of course, because we're always drugged. We're she was drugged or whatever. I don't know. And then we, we broke up or whatever. Um, but yeah, she. Did. That was because I remember, and I went to there, and I was there, and I was with the mom, and I took my my fucking pill, and then we. Broke you were up. with the mom. It was the mom's at the clinic, right? So I drove uh, over there. The mom's there, the daughter's there, and I take my pill, and I remember, and I was like, "This is kind that's of an awkward, awkward conversation yeah. right there. That's an awkward moment, bro. You're with the girl and her mom. Yeah, and you get, you get yeah, because I'm here to take a pill, and it's like you know, I didn't. It's like I didn't do <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? I'm not the one who fucking <laughs> fucked the man. Listen, dude. I only hit it once, doggy style, ma'am. Okay, your daughter, you know. Was like, well, she was my girlfriend, right? Yeah. She's the one who. Allegedly fucked uh, some Dominican dude who worked at Sprint or oh, something you serious? at the party, right? <laughs> and that just sounds bad off the bat. Yeah, Dominican yeah, yeah. dude from Sprint. You the know you catch something. In the, in the bit, I always, I always make fun of it, which is true. Like, he didn't work at a Sprint store. He worked at the kiosk in the middle, which was worse, right? The oh, God, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's All the people got chlamydia that work in the kiosk. Man. Fucking <laughs> DR is fucking finest, right? Dude, but. that's crazy. So you was there with the mom taking the pill. Yeah, but like, And again, the mom's the one that called. Never been tested, though. Like, that's, I got the call. Just kill two birds just to be safe. And then the only time I was, uh, the, is the plasma thing. I went with a friend, 
uh, we got they test you before you sell your plasma, uh, and then they tell you like, oh, you you have this and this and that, and they're like, I remember I got tested, but my friend's dad got tested, but he, the friend's dad was like. That's when they found out, oh, his dad was up to some shit because the oh, dad couldn't give blood. Yeah, the dad couldn't give blood. So Damn, they're like, sir, you can't give blood. You're a whore. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he's like, because, you know, we didn't know that. And then afterwards, more stuff out came about the dad and we found out. And I was like, oh, oh okay. dad was getting busy knocking yeah, boots. Was, that yeah, wasn't his. Boots, smoking pipe. But you know what? They that's the thing. Like that uh, that plasma thing. I used to get plasma all the time. I hate it, man. I, I used never to all the time again. when I was in the army because you know sometimes as a as a soldier, you would waste your money carelessly. So sometimes to make a little extra cash, you'd go donate plasma. My brother wanted to do that because I, he I, had. I remember COVID. my last experience. It was fucking bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, the God. shit. I don't know. I don't know if the lady didn't know what she was doing. Like. The needle, I don't know if there was a bubble. That shit hurt because it takes like an hour. Yeah, like, I don't you got to sit there for a minute. They bring it. They pump it out. They bring mm -hmm. it back. And I remember like that last time my shit got bruised. That shit hurt. And I was really? just like, I'm never doing this shit again. See, that's it. My brother tried to do it because he had COVID, but mm -hmm. I guess his iron was too low okay. to give it. And I'm like, how are you fat, bro? You know how much I like. I, I'm for real, though. Like, I don't understand. How, but he started. He's a vegan, though. He's vegetarian. So, like, it sucks because he wants to, like, preach that shit all the time. Like, my sister's a vegan. Yeah, and I laugh. She doesn't have a job. Oh, really? It's funny. <laughs> and she lives with my mom. Complains, like, Mom, why are you making this? And I get so pissed. It's like. <laughs> You're like, you can't afford to be vegan, okay? Like, get a job. Yeah. My brother told me that. He was like, hey, hey you know, uh, you feel healthier. I was like, Johnny, we both got titties, and they're both the same size, and you're still a vegan. So nothing's changed, bro. I'd rather just keep eating what I'm eating. But it's crazy because he was a vegan at the time when he went to give, and his iron was low. So I was like, it must not be working for you. You got to supplement. Like, if you're actually vegan, you got to supplement. There's certain things you got to take to supplement because you don't get all the things you need. Oh, really? From Yeah, you don't. So to do it properly, you got to eat a certain way, and you most likely have to supplement. Like... To get all this stuff, because there's a lot of stuff in meat that we need that's important, right? Yeah, yeah. But like they don't flavor, taste. Fuck that. I love meat, bro. I love. I I was gonna try to do the keto, because my buddy who was in the army in Colorado told me to do it, and I was all on board to the moment he said I can't have sugar. I was like, you better kiss my oh, ass. Oh yeah, you can't. Bro. I got pissed when he told me that. I almost hung up on him. I was like, what? I did. I did keto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got mad at him. He's like, bro, you're good. I'm like, bacon? Hell yeah. Steak? Yes. Yeah, okay, no potatoes, that's fine, cool. No sugar, bitch, you better, man, don't talk to me no more. I hung up on I was like, don't you ever tell me some shit like that. Coca-Cola? I, bro, I love Coke. Yeah, right, people are addicted to Coke. Bro, I tear that shit up. <laughs> I buy a case, I'll drink a case. But now I cut it out because I do my, I still do my sweets, but I cut out Coke because they say if you cut out soda, you lose up to 20 pounds a year. And so you do see the difference because I used to get heartburn, acid indigestion. Yeah, when I quit, di when I quit Diet Coke, I yeah. lost heartburn, and I I'll still get it if I drink if I drink when I drink whiskey. So I'm gonna try yeah, drinking alcohol. Yeah, me too. Whiskey will give me heartburn. Yeah, and fucking uh, and what the fuck did I just say? And the coke, the oh, diet coke, and the diet coke. Yeah, because I had no, I've been drinking diet coke for years, and I would take stuff for heartburn. Do you like stuff. diet coke? It don't taste nasty to you. I'm like. I became addicted to it, right? I really? loved it. Like, it was, yeah, like it was it Trump James? level. It's, it's way coke. better than regular coke. See, be, but I'm saying I think it's a chemical. Once you get really? used to it, man, it's like a sick addiction. Because in my head, this is the thing with me, sick. right? It's sick, man. No, it's, not. it's not sick, but it's like it's an addiction. Because look, if I drink one or two Cokes, I feel bad because I know there's sugar in it. There's something with Diet Coke. It's like, oh, wait, there's technically not sugar. It's zero calories. Oh, I just had seven. Like, what the fuck am I doing? You know? Yeah. Like, it could happen like that. It does. It? I used to work... At Chili's, remember that? Mm -hmm. When I first started doing comedy, I worked at Chili's. And I remember one time, this lady came, and she was like, I'm on a diet. I said, okay, cool. So she orders her food. This bro this lady ordered a two for 25, okay? That's an appetizer, two dinners, and dessert. Okay. Big fat white lady? Yeah. Okay. Problem was, she was by herself. <laughs> That's the crazy part. She was by herself. And I was like... Do you want me to get another pair, of, you know, another set of silverware? Kind of turned down, but keep going. Yeah, on. she's like, like, do you want another set of silverware? She's like, no, no need. I'm like, damn, she's gangster. I was big, proud big, of her. Big, big, big. Yeah, but then she pissed me off because then she gonna ask for a diet coke. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> what is me. the point? If you're already this far, you might as well go all out, get the regular coke. She got the diet coke, and, and that's what she said. She goes, yeah, I'm trying to cut down. You know, on my diet, and you know, I'm done the Diet Coke. I'm like, but you're stuffing your face with a two for 25. Okay, way to go, buddy. Yeah. Did she ever ring? <laughs> no, of course not. She looked like a lady that had like 25 cats at the house, bro. I used to make, And it was all just the same size as her. I used to have a turn on with like feeding, not feeding women, right? Like there was yeah. a girl I used to sleep with, right? And she would text me sometimes. 
and I would screenshot the message and send it to my friends because she was like, hey, before I come over, you know, give me a McChicken and double cheese. And it would turn me on knowing that I'm going to, we're going to, fe- I'm going to feed her and fuck her, as I would say, man. Yeah. It would, yeah, it was such a big thing for me because it's, I don't know. That like, turned go, you on. It did. It did. I got, <laughs> not really, I got, I got all kinds of uh, uh, weird uh, turn on. Like, yes, the other day I was on top of my girl and I was masturbating and I was just looking at her, her hand. Yeah. She had, she had, she got these nice nails that just got done. And I was like, Kind of started jerking after her hand. That's something I've never done before. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of weird. See, like, to me, I never was able to be that open with it. Uh-huh. Like, I got caught oh, she once. was asleep. Yeah, I got caught one time by my girl. Like, I was by myself in the living room. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like it was my mom that caught me. You know, because she did like that. <laughs> open the door. And you know what I think? I think she knew. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm by myself. I'm like, perfect. Ain't nobody here. I was watching. I forgot I was watching. It was something so dumb, too, bro. It was like, all I caught was just like cleavage. But I hadn't had none because we had the kids. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, yeah, we were about to have some fun. So, you know, I get the Rosie Palm and the Five Sisters. And sure enough, she walks right in. What are you doing? I'm like, oh, not, nothing. I'm just putting this blanket. She's like, you nasty. I'm like, I ain't nasty. What are you talking about? I'm like, it's natural. She's like, then why are you hiding? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even answer. I was like, damn it, man. Because they hit you with that. You're like, you all that. But why are you hiding? I was like, I can't even, I can't even argue that. You know, I, the first time I ever did it, though, I wasn't like, I didn't do it for the first time until I was 18 when I masturbated. I lost my virginity when I was nine. Oh. I swear to God. I Where, did, bro. With what? With some older chick? <laughs> and with my stepfather's daughter. I swear yeah, to God. Oh, that God. was some Jerry Springer <laughs> shit. Puerto I can't Rican. make it up, bro. She Rican. was 13. I was nine years old. And she showed me the facts of life. I said, oh, shit. So, your step, hold on. Be your stepfather's daughter. daughter yeah. Father's. So your stepfather. From Mexico. Yeah, basically. That's, when you put it like that, it's nasty, right. though. That's really. in right now, though. Steps is Yeah, that's not nasty. That's yeah. mainstream on Pornhub. Bro, bro, I'm telling you, it really happened. I was nine years old. I think my girl just sent me a screenshot of some porn. She, it was something. I'm, oh, I'm Yeah, it was my stepsister, bro. That's why I lost my virginity <laughs> to my freaking stepsister. Let me, let me see this porno. It was, uh, it's yeah, it's the thing right now. It was porn. What is it? Here, here's the title. No, that's something else. Those are my sales numbers. Okay, I don't know where it's at, but it was like, yeah, I'm. It said something like, "I'm not a hoe. I just, my, I just get really turned on by my stepbrother." Or yeah, something like what that. The fuck? I believe, bro. It happened. I was my stepsister. I can't <laughs> believe it. I was like, shit. I'm bagging my stepsister. How are you guys? How's your relationship the, now? Well, the cool part was here's the crazy part. Uh, here's the crazy part. After I blazed it for the first time, it was cool because she had all her homegirls that would come from middle school, mm-hmm. and they would like you know hang out in the room together, and I'd be like, how her titties look. And she would tell me, <laughs> swear to God, we'd have these conversations. And then we'd blaze. Yeah, I was, bro, she was not you pretty. You smoking either. at night? Nah. You said blaze? Yeah, we're blazing it, you know. Was, oh, was, yeah. I never heard that before. Is that this supposed to oh, Okay, I was like, I never heard. Yeah, that. but I was, yeah. And, and the crazy part was, I was in third grade. Man, that <laughs> fucked me up for what? life, bro. Oh, because then the girl, after she went back to Mexico, mm-hmm. then the girls that I was trying to holler at, I was trying yeah, to holler at <laughs> on that level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I told one girl, like, yo, I put my finger. And she was like, ew, teacher. Yeah, like, I want to like, play with Play-Doh. Yeah, I was like, oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought this was okay. <laughs> that that was normal, right? Yeah, I was like, oops, sorry. Yeah, it was horrible, bro. It was bad. I look at it now, it was horrible. But yeah, I wasn't complaining when I was nine years old. I was like, this is new to me. It was new. It oh. was interesting. How are you guys now? <laughs> I, you know what's funny? She died. She died <laughs> <laughs> today. She died today. <laughs> yeah, she died today. <laughs> no, bro. She died like three years ago. And to this day, her dad doesn't know. My stepfather doesn't know. God forbid out. if he's watching this shit. I'm <laughs> fucked. I'm, I just opened the whole can of worms. The family's over. God. Yeah, I can write a book on it now because he knows. But yeah, bro, I swear. Yeah, she passed away in Mexico. And they, uh, I guess she didn't take care of herself. Mm-hmm. You know, she was always a bigger girl. And then she got even bigger. And then she didn't take care of she herself. She went to she, Ch- Chili's, Mexico, ordered the two for 25. She got the two for 25. <laughs> she was like, I know about this diet. If you get that, you can get a Diet Coke. It's okay. But she ended up dying. And then it was funny because I was like, it wasn't funny. But, you know, yeah. he's like, yeah, she passed. And I was just like, man, I'm so sorry. But the first thing that came into my mind, the asshole that I am, I was like, Damn, if only he knew I was hitting it from the back when she was 13 years old. <laughs> like, you know, like, just think about that, bro. But it was crazy, yeah. Latinos have that, though. I think that's something natural. Yeah, there's a girl I got a Facebook fight with over a fight. But when I was, like, about nine or something like that, she was 13. We didn't have sex, but she brought me in. I told the story here on before. She brought me in. She tricked. She had me going, maybe suck her tits or do something. And I get 
Well, she brought me in with beans, right? Because she was babysitting me. She got you with beans. But beans, I, this is this has happened because I love beans yeah. with the with the crumbled cheese and I think queso fresco. This cheese has oh. more salt to it, right? Okay. Like a Honduran cheese, it's kind of similar to the Mexican cheese when they bring from Mexico. When people come from Mexico, they, you got the cheese. It's very important. But this cheese, I would have it with some tapatio or whatever sauce they had. I love this cheese with mm-hmm. the beans. And she's like, "Oh, you want beans? Come over here." And then I was like, "All right, where's the beans?" It's like, "Come to the room." And I was like, "Where the fuck are these beans?" And there wasn't, but it was her right there. And she's she like, right me. here. Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> had me. Like, I messed around with her or something like that. But I remember a few years later, you know, I don't know if my mom knows, but I remember, I, like, I don't think they do. I don't think anybody really knows. But I remember she got into a fight because uh, my mom posted something. I think it was something political. And then I attacked her. And I was like, who, I was like, who pays for my fucking mom's bills? Do you? You stupid fucking bitch. And I remember. Yeah. And then I was really like, wait a second. Isn't the bitch that yeah. we for the beans that we yeah. messed around when I was nine? Did you tell her that? He's like, bitch, where's my beans? <laughs> no, and no. Yeah, on top of that, where the beans at? I'm still waiting on them beans. Because I think it's her. Because it's her or her sister. And I can't tell because they yeah. look similar, right? Yeah. So I won't I won't, I won't, won't say who it was. But no, she's she's in Texas. And she's married. I think that's the girl. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, it happens, bro. For I think it happens. You know what the worst part was? I was nine. I remember one time my mom was like, go take a bath. And she's like, Kuselena, that was a girl's name. She said, like, can you help her? Oh, my God, it's not her name. That's crazy. <laughs> she's like, can you help her? <laughs> can you help her? But she went and went to the bathroom. She's jerking me off. I'm like, Ma, if only you knew. Thank you. Thanks, Ma. Love you. She said, bro, I tell you, like, it was like, because we were too confident. That's the problem with Latinos. We get too comfortable back then. So we leave our kids with what everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, we'd be like, oh, yeah, go stay at the house. That's fine. We don't know what's going on. Now you have to be yeah, cautious, now, man. I, I tell my niece, I was like, don't trust anybody. I don't let my daughter stay nowhere. Nowhere. I tell her, you ain't staying nowhere. You want a friend to spend the night? They could come over here, but you ain't going to nobody's house. I'd be damned. I don't even let her go outside. I let her go outside, but she sits in front, and she's 14. And people are like, you're too hard on her. I was like, I don't give a shit. You know what? I do it my way. Because I don't trust nobody. You can't, man. You can't. crazy people Because when stuff like that happens, it's always somebody you know. You know it I mean? is. So it I is. don't trust, like, no, I tell my niece, like, no, we're like, we, this weekend, we went out, and then we all hung out, and then with um, my girl's son and her friend, and they were going to go back to the, the, the kid's house, right? The mom was there. I was like, okay, but then the mom had to leave. And then the dad was only going to be there. And I don't know that motherfucker. So, yeah. you know, I was like, no offense. I'm not here to, but like, nah, she, she's, she's yeah, coming with us. You exactly. Know I mean? She's a girl. It's different. If it was a boy, I'd probably be a little, uh, who gives a shit? Yeah, right. So, it's it's like, boys, we don't care. We give a fuck, but it's well, a girl. It's like, yeah. no, we even told her, she was like, oh, we're going to go. Blah, blah, blah. The kid was excited, but I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> it's not no, going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's different when it's a girl. We, had to yeah. t- we told the kids, like, look, it's a little bit different when it's a girl. You know what fucked me up? I watched How to Catch a Predator. Ever since then, I don't trust nobody. Oh, Chris <laughs> Yeah, that shit. Ever <laughs> since I watched that shit, I was like, ain't no one getting near my daughter. I don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a messed up show. So <laughs> yeah, dominoes, that, dildos. Yeah, and, uh, dude, what are you doing here? I was just trying to talk her out of it. Really? Then why you got a pack of rubbers, a six pack of beer, and you're ready to go in? You know, like, you can't trust. You can't. So I tell my daughter, I'm like, you can leave when you go to college. I ain't going to leave, and I don't know where the hell you at. I don't want to know where you at. Do whatever you want. But while you're here until you're 18, that I care about you, you're going to be under my rules. Once you're 18, I don't want to give a shit. Yeah. Oh, you're 18. <laughs> I did my part. I'm going to miss the baby years. You're already grown now. There's nothing cute about you. You know what I mean? But it's crazy. It's hard raising a daughter, bro. Girls are hard anyway. My daughter cries about everything, bro. She cries. Bro, she was crying one day upstairs in her room. I mean, bawling, bro. I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck? So I run upstairs, and I'm fat. So to run up, I'm pissed already that I had to run upstairs, you know? So I get to the room. I open up. What happened? She was crying for a cartoon, bro. (laughs) You ever watching Tangled or something like that? No, it wasn't that. It was Brave. Something with a, a bear or something. She's crying because a cartoon bear... Is her mother and died. I like, are you shitting me? Baby, they used a the pen to make it. They used a the crayon, and you're crying over crayon. Like, <laughs> what are you crying over, bro? Like, I, I don't, that's the thing I struggle with that her mom gets on me with because I don't have that emotional mm-hmm. faucet, like, you know, back in my heart for her. So when she cries about dumb stuff, I'm like, are you serious right now? Are you really being like, what are you crying, you moron? And then she gets mad. Don't call me moron. I'm like, just stop being one. And I won't call you one. You know, like, we argue, bro. Like, like, like I watched, um, and I talked about this on stage. I watched the the Full House, right, with her? Because mm-hmm. she's like, Daddy, 
there's a show called Full House. I'm like, man, I, man, bitch, I know about Full House. I was around. I know about DJ, staff, and all that. And she's like, oh, you know the names? Yeah, because I used to watch it. I know my oh, sister Oh, yeah, because now they watch Friends. Before. It's like yeah. a Netflix. And everything. Yeah. yeah. So she watches Full House, and I'm sitting with her watching it. And you know how every episode goes. Danny Tanner may, you know, scold the daughter. She'll run upstairs, pissed her off. She slams the door, and then they're like, I got it. Each one takes a turn every episode. First is Uncle Jesse. I got this. And they'll go up. <laughs> music's playing real slow, right? <laughs> music's playing real slow. They knock on the door like, dum, dum, dum. DJ. And then she'll open the door. They talk. They hug it out. And I realized, I was like, man, I am a shitty father. Because like, <laughs> that don't work with me. you know. And I tried it one time because I was like, she was giving me an attitude. I was like, you know what? No. I was like, instead of what would Jesus do? What would Danny do? What would Danny do in this situation? So I was like, I'm a Danny Tanner harass. So she goes upstairs. I go upstairs. And in my mind, I got the music playing. I'm like, tan, tan, you know, all right, cool. And I knock on the door and she don't answer. I knock again and she's like, I don't want to answer. And I ended up cussing her. I was like, if you don't open that effing door, I swear to God, they're going to find your body in the pond. Don't press me. I will kill you. Like, I just lost it. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? Fuck Danny. Danny was <laughs> Fuck a co- Danny, Danny. Danny was a cokehead before he was on Full House anyway. You know what? <laughs> Fuck Danny what the Danny. hell does he know? Do you got any uh, last words or plugs? We're closing it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this will be out like in two weeks. Oh, this is my mom. Cool, cool. Wait, what did you say? I just saw my mom. Oh, you just saw your mom? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, actually, you know what? It's been an honor being on this. I've been I've been dying to be on this, so it's pretty cool. Um, I have my, uh, my monthly show at the Elk Grove Village. At, at, at work, work at work sports bar and grill um i also have a show tomorrow going on at uh lincoln lodge zacko show the sorry for killing it show and then i'll be in harvey great spot lincoln i went for the first time it last is week. Yeah, it's a really cool spot. spot i did a show there uh last month and it was the first time i was there and i was like this is a dope spot but i'm doing that with uh zacko tomorrow with lincoln lodge saturday i'll be in harvey i have no idea where the hell harvey is i feel is. like i've been out there i feel like it's a place i don't belong but i'm still going because they paying me but I'm doing Harvey, and then uh, I just got the monthly show. Got the, uh, a few other shows coming up. So, other than that, oh, we got the podcast. Me and Zacho, we got our Scared Silly podcast. A scared Silly podcast. Yes, Scared Silly. And then James, you want to plug yourself? Um, yeah, start a podcast with me. People of Comedy Network on Instagram. Yes. Uh, at People of Comedy or Facebook.com slash People of Comedy. Um, th- this fucking South by Southwest thing's never coming out. I'm never gonna finish it. Uh, <laughs> but I-, I might just release the original cut. I don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah, what's like, going on with that though? I just don't have time, yeah. dude. I'm just working so much, which you know, don't tell comedians that or they'll yell at you. But uh, <laughs> fucking, you know, hey, he's the hardest. I'm gonna say something. James Webb is one of the hardest working guys I know in Chicago. I- and I'm not saying it because he's here and he could probably kick my ass. I'm saying it because it's true. <laughs> Like, I, you know, like I watch his hustle and it's like, it's crazy because every show I'll be at, he'll just pop up. And I'm like, that's gangster. <laughs> I almost fucked up his, uh, your, your, what was it? Your, your drone. Cause he, he left the controller <laughs> at Zany's down and I'm on the phone with Zacho and my dumb ass, you know, I don't know about this shit. Right. I'm like, dog, I thought it was a video game right. and I'm grabbing it and I'll like, bro, are you stupid? I'm like, what, bro? This is pretty dope. Look, I can see outside with it. He's like, that's his drone. And I was like, then why is this here? He's like, he probably dropped it. Go put it back. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, oops. Yeah. Um. But yeah, also I have a drone. Uh, yes. If you want, if you want to pay me to, well, you can't pay me yet. Uh, the cops in Wrigleyville actually talked to me and thought I was a terrorist because I was flying it around Wrigley Field the other day. So oh, I can't God. fly my drone until I got pilot license. But when I do, you can pay me to film you with my drone. Every um, regulation, you know. It's country. but I was a also a fucking. A I was an idiot. I was flying a drone during a Cubs game next to Wrigley Field. That's fucking stupid. It would have been cooler if you like hit a player with it. <laughs> that would have been some gangster shit. I would have been like, I know his, I know that drone. <laughs> I, I mean, they may have stopped me, but I got the footage and it's sick. So check oh, out cool. Professor Pizza's Instagram soon. I'm um, gonna look at it. Yeah, it'll be tight. But uh, but yeah, if you if you want if you want any camera work done, if you're filming a special, if you if you're recording an album, if you're doing sketches, if you're doing anything, hit me up. I'm at Eclism A C O I S M on Instagram. Best in the business because he did my video at Zanies and that shit came out fantastic. <laughs> he even made me look thinner in it, and that's hard to do. <laughs> So. I gotta go. All right, I'm gonna see if I can go live right now because I'm over at a thousand uh, whatever on what is it called TikTok. Let me see if I can TikTok. So follow me on 
uh, TikTok now because I now have over a thousand followers. There so I think go. now I can go live. So if oh, you, and follow me on Anthony Fuentes Comedy. Yes. Anthony Fuentes Instagram. Comedy. Yes. Uh, and Anthony Fuentes on, on Facebook as well. Okay, so let me see. It's going live, I feel. Anyway, so follow the Lower Dan Podcast. I'm live right now. This is the first live I'm doing on TikTok. What's up? Do you go. have a TikTok? You know what? I have a TikTok. How y'all doing? Peace and blessings. I have a TikTok, but I noticed that everybody on TikTok who has a lot of followers has titties and ass, and I don't. But I do got titties. But I was like, I can't get followers, so I gave up. But now I just sit there and scroll and look at everybody's video. And so I'm going to be following keep you putting too, stuff up. Keep putting stuff up because I had, like I said, one of one of them hit over 100K, one of them hit 500K. Wow. Almost yeah, I've hear, I've heard great things. So some of them, tit, I don't know how it fucking works. I don't know how to please the Chinese masters, but yeah. some of them fucking work. Uh, but follow that, add the Patreon, and for the TikTokers, uh, James Webb. What's what's the, your TikTok for People of Comedy? It's just at People of Comedy. At People of Comedy. Yeah. Uh, Lobo Den Podcast, add the Patreon, give me a review, maybe DM me. My Snapchat is, there's, I don't even get views anymore because I was using Who that. Who uses Snapchat? Well, I would use it. I would still get a lot of stuff and promote the podcast. I still kind of promote it, but it was really for just me you know, yeah, a complete horror. I don't, yeah. I use it just once <laughs> in a blue. And and drugs. <laughs> that's all I had it for. All right. Uh, I don't even know. Am I even on? Okay. Lobo Den. That's it. Lobo Den.